Welcome back to part two of the Farmer Market Series, where we look at how to use photos to engage with your audience and increase foot traffic because we all know when we go to a market, we want to ensure that people show up. So this is part two of a series to ensure that people show up. Yay. If you are new here and you haven't checked out part one, I highly recommend you go do that now because it gives you five key elements to ensuring that you are set up for success heading into your farmer's market. Also, if you're new here, my name is Hannah and I am a professional photographer and educator. I help agriculture businesses turn those low quality photos into high quality impact. I also teach you how to take high quality photos. So it's a two for one deal here. And this is part two of a series and you know why you're here, so let's get into it. So here we go, let's get into it. The first one, sneak peeks. Who doesn't love a good sneak peek of something coming out, right? Are there people that you follow or creators you follow or other farmers that you're like, mm, I know you're after something and you're just waiting for them to drop a hint of whatever that something might be? Do that for your audience. Drop some juicy hints for them to figure out so that they too can be involved and feel included in this whole process. Give them a sneak peek to whatever you're doing or whatever might be market specific so that they feel the urge to want to see whatever it is in the next one. Number two, this one might be a little bit more challenging, but if you have the ability to do it, I say go for it, especially if you're a farmer's market vendor, or not vendor, um, host. Um, and part number two is that allowing Instagram takeovers. So if you are starting off in a farmer's market and maybe you like lost a bunch of foot traffic before and you want to increase your foot traffic post COVID, or maybe you're new to the farmer's market area and you're not sure how to increase foot traffic, the best thing you can do, or not the best thing, one of the great things you can do is allow your vendors to do Instagram takeovers, right? Collaborate with each other's audiences. So maybe if you have 15 vendors confirmed coming, you send one vendor every two days or vendor highlights Mondays and Fridays, something like that, and you allow your vendors to take over your Instagram and showcase what they're doing. On the flip side, if you are a vendor and you want to increase your foot traffic and let people know that you're coming, I recommend reaching out to whoever is hosting the farmer's market and asking them if they do Instagram takeover. If they don't, reach out to other vendors who you might know at that market and take over each other's Instagram. Really share audiences, right? Build each other up, promote each other using photos on each other's accounts. It's a great taking over each other's Instagram can go a long way in really promoting yourself to a whole new demographic, especially if it's two companies that don't necessarily specialize in the same thing. All right, now if you have learned anything or if you're intrigued or had an aha moment or if you've got the wheels turning, I want you to hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep going with parts two and three of this series. The third type is user generated content or UGC. Now UGC is a newer term and it is content, photos, videos, whatever it might be that's created by your end user. You're not creating it at all. You're, you're, you're hands off. All you're doing is reposting or sharing it. But it's your end users, it's your clients, it's the people who buy from you, your customers who are creating this content, whether it's pictures or videos, they're uploading it on your behalf or they're sharing it with you and you get to share that with other people. When other people see that it's not just you creating content and you truly have customers, they will love that. They will dive deeper into that. So having users create content for you is great especially when it's free. Also a push right now, and you may or may not be able to do this, but there are paid professionals who create user-generated content. And so they create content that looks like your everyday user. It's not super high tech, it's not super professional. It doesn't look like it's done by a professional. It looks like it's done by somebody with minimal skills, which adds the real life element to it and adds that relatable element. And you can actually hire people or pay people to do user-generated content for you. You could also do giveaways with this in order to increase the user generated content. Hey, have you done our products before? We want to see photos of it. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but we want to see photos of you with our products. And everybody who shares the photo and tags us 
will be entered into a draw, right? That will increase how many people are sharing user-generated photos with you, and then you can repost them onto your social, right? Easy, done. They created the content for you. You just have to share it. Number four, if you have like five or six weeks coming up to a market or even more, and you actually have a line of products, one of the things you can do is product highlights and you spend an entire week focusing on one product per that week. You're not sharing all kinds of things. You're really focusing on one and you're creating how to's and you're doing demos and you're giving information of what's involved and why it's important and how it can make your life great. And you're really hounding out this one awesome product or this one vegetable or one fruit and why you should have it in your home and how it's going to make your life so much better right and one week really just focusing on one product and then do it the next week and the next week and the next week and then the week before combine the things be like yo remember this from like six weeks ago yeah yeah, yeah. that thing that you love is going to be at the market so come check it out right so focusing one week at a time is a really good way to keep your life simple but to share what you do, how you do it with your audience. Number five is candid customer shots. So if this is really good from previous markets, if you have photos from previous markets where your customers were taking pictures at your booth or at your station, having those in a Google Drive or a separate folder so you can go back to and be like, yo, remember the last time we did this? It was so awesome. Well, here's a little, you know, throwback Thursday to how great this was and we can't wait to replicate these results and be better than them. Right, so throwback, awesome, great way. Candid shots, make sure you get a lot of candid shots with your audience at market so you have them to promote the future ones. Now, if you're going into your first market and you don't have any of these, that's okay because you can put this on your notebook to get for when you're in your first market so that you can apply it to all of the other markets afterwards. And then number six, number six, number six is day of content. So similar to getting your audience at your booth, having day of content, showcasing your stock at its peak, and then as it goes down, even if you have to, you know, move some things off the shelf to make the illusion that things are going faster than they are, that's fine. That implements a sense of urgency and we like that. Right? Showcasing all the stock that's ready to be moved, how much stock is left, you know, interacting with other vendors, supporting each other. Who are your vendor mates? Right, getting pictures with them, promoting each other um, on social media, sharing through organizations and cross audiences. So people who may not want their products necessarily right now might want yours and vice versa. Bringing people in because once they're in, then you can do your magic and tell to them or tell them in person why all of your passion that you've dedicated into this work is so important and why you work so hard to create valuable visual story elements with photos or videos to ensure that they showed up and they came again. So those are six elements to use photography, to utilize different photography, to increase your engagement and bring people out to your farmer's market. Stay tuned for part three and it'll be awesome. I, it'll be great. I got you. I got you.